Commander Grizz's log. Start a 20, 8, 20, 20, 20, We are still. We are. We are. We have landed in the Zoo, the Zugar Five. And right at an important research base, and on the request of Admiral Neps to, to to locate the the space station known as the trip in the Triple A system. In the meantime, we are beginning a discussion. But in, according to the advisory, this is one of the biggest rainstorms out there right now. Um, Kit, that uh, any any, pr sorry. I always confuse my 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 friends. Anyway, it's it's all right. I mean, anyway, shouldn't you be preparing right now for the for 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 a holiday event? Of course, but um, uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll be doing something special for 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 the for the holidays when when it comes there. But for now, any any site on the re on and the research we're looking for. Uh, not yet, command. Not yet, commander. Uh, if I may be so bold. Commander Grizzly, I think we need. I think need we get. We need. We we need. We need. I, we, it'll take us a bit of time to search the data banks. Besides, these rainstorms are, isn't isn't helping one bit. This is part of the. It causes some interference on some of the databases. Understood them. In the meantime, I got a reaction to get to. Then please, please notify me about the about the. Uh, but anything other than useful, only thing we found, sir, is about the about what we um, from the database is about what's been going on on Planet Drew. That the that the Aztec Corporation has been trying to enlist the the butcher gang into their in, in, into the organization as well, uh, as well as the uh, and in return the butcher gang is being one of their one of the Drew the Planet Drew's best product with them. The ink machine. Oh no. That's only going to boost their power. <sighs> look into more of a, a more topism so we can look where to find Bendy and his friends at. Alright. Hi everybody. Commander Grizzly here. Well, this rainstorm isn't helping one bit. But, hey. We might as well get to a reaction. Today, we're, it's, or more, should I say, three reactions. Our first reaction is going to be the continuing story of of uh, the adventures of Tara and his and his uh, and his boyfriend and don't stop smiling. This is from our friend and and, and uh, Harry Flew TV. The link will be in the description down below. So let's just stop. Let's get this going. So. The... Hello, I'm Harry Flew TV. I'm you going And today I'm going to be reading. <coughs> don't stop smiling. Chapter six and um, chapter seven and eight. So, that's okay, man. Without further ado, let's begin. Let's begin. I would also like to mention that when I'm doing the voice of Jeff, I'll be putting on the voice of Jeffrey Keaton, not the humbling studio Jeff, because mm. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to do his voice, and whenever I do the voice of classic Jeff. Killer wound voice is all gravelly. Sometimes it doesn't sound so clear on camera, especially when I'm reading. It's alright, man. Stuff. So, without further ado, let's begin. I'm oh, sorry, I'm trying to shut the door. Take your time, man. Without further ado, let's begin. Raven placed a hand on this boy's arm. I know how you feel, Beast Boy. I don't trust Terra either. I'm sorry for everything that you've been through, but can I confess something? I love you. Beast Boy looked at Raven and pulled her face. Well, no offense, Raven, but I don't think of you like that. I see you more as a sister than a girlfriend. And besides, I don't have time for romance, not anymore. Raven looked hurt and be spoiled surprised. Oh no, Raven, I'm sorry for offending you. I didn't know what anything to do with romance right now, but thank you for your comfort. <coughs> Raven gave a sad smile and left the room. 
Meanwhile, in Flames Lair, Lou and Flames were on the computer. I think I found the word Jeffrey in. But how is that possible? Flames asked himself. Lou overheard. When I pinned Jeff down, I sneakily played the tracker on him. Flames turned to Lou and sniped behind the mark. Clever boy. <clears throat> Thank you, Master. Lou bowed his head. He didn't tighten the tower. He just made a huge mistake. Play told Lou. Soon the team Titans will be in the zone. And Jeff will well be mine. He will be, be he will be a good apprentice. It will be an honor to have the world's most economic killer work for me. Oh dear. Meanwhile, back at Titan's Tower. Why are we blindfolded? <clears throat> Why are we blindfolded? Jeff asked as Robin covered him. Karen and Sally by with blindfolds. He guided them towards a room. We have a surprise for you. <clears throat> when they entered the room, Robin undid the blindfold and, and the tree of gas. In the room were two beds. One big bed had a bedside table next to it, with a radio player next to one clock and a lamp next to it. And the little bed was for Sally. Is this for us? Tara asked as she looked all around the room. Yes, said Robin. You need a place to stay until you're all trained up. And since you two are a couple, Dogfire gave the idea of you two sharing a bed. And Sally had her own. Sarah and Jeff smiled. She's beautiful, they both said in unison. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff said to Robin. <coughs> Dogfire came in. This was friend Tara's bed from before. We didn't know what to do with it after she betrayed us and sacrificed herself to save us. So we kept it in the memory of her. Jeff and Tara both lay on the bed. I will give you two some privacy. Robin told them before he and Starfire backed out of the room and closed the door. I love, I love you. Tara told Jeff. Her hand slipped into his. Jeff looked at her and smiled. I love you too. We'll get through this together. Jeff Sweet. came to and looked at the clock. Wow, 8 p.m. Jeff stood in front of the bed and took his coat and hoodie off. And Tara took her school outfit off. They lay back down on the bed and pulled the covers over them. Good night, sweetheart, Jeff whispered. Good night. Sarah so whispered back. They kissed and then they went to sleep. The next morning, Jeff picked up his coat to put it on and he gasped in horror, which was terror. What's wrong? She exclaimed. There's a, tr there's a tracker on my coat. Tara, Jeff told her. Lou must have placed it on me. Jeff and Tara quickly got dressed and Tara set off the alarm. To alert the other Titans. What's the emergency? Robin asked wildly. Dear. Explained. Tara informed. She explained what Jeff had found and the other Titans got. And that means Slade could have shared at any moment, Raven said. Suddenly there was a sound coming from outside. Who was that? Who was that? asked our father. Probably, probably Slade, Jeff said. I have to go out and see. If it is Slade, then that's me he wants. The other Titan gasped. No, Jeff, you can't. Tara protested before I tell him what to do. I'm sorry, Tara, but I have to do it. Besides, I have to beat him on my own. And Lou is my brother, so I, so I have to reason with him. Tara sniffed and pulled Jeff into a hug. I love you. 
Thank you for the song, uh, the song, Queen Starlight Queen. I love you too. They pulled away and Jeff headed up towards the double door. Then Robin placed a hand on his shoulder. Wait, he said. Take this. Chapter 8. Right. Jeff turned around and saw that Robin was holding a star that wasn't in mode. You'll meet these. He then pulled out a tiny communicator and placed it in Jeff's hand. And Jeff took the star with the other hand. Thank you, Jeff. When they got when Jeff got outside, he heard the noise a noise and saw a figure. Who's there? He goes, Who's there? Demanded. Hello, Jeffrey. Lou stepped out of the shadows and Jeff held up his staff in the face. Lou, I don't want to hurt you. I'll leave it to the side. Lou smirked when Jeff said that. Sorry, but I'm not interested. Lou ran towards Jeff and leapt forward. Jeff dodged and Lou tried to hit him with the staff, but Jeff blocked it with his own staff. And kicked at Lou, knocking him down. Jeff ran at him, but Lou kicked back, kicked him back and stood up. Halt! said a voice. Jeff and Lou turned to see the other six titans. Leave my boyfriend alone! Sarah said. Well, your boyfriend won't live very long anyway. Jeff said, mockingly. Titan, go! Robin shouted. Titans ran towards the river fact. Lou fought back. These boats are filled with a dinosaur and tried to catch me with a mark. Tara rose rocks and dirt from the ground and made them attack. Robin charged <laughs> towards me and attacked him with yeah. fighting skills. Starfire shot star bolts at Lou, but he dodged them twice. Jeff joined the fight on the This is getting interesting. Back and the two dots looked at one another. That's not like Metreal and Zenfos! Raven well, cried out. The classic the line. Raven shot her at him with her hands and shot towards Lou. Lou jumped and dodged all the attacks and pulled out a smoke bomb before throwing it into the ground. The bomb hit the floor with a hard thud. And smoke poured out and surrounded the Teen Titans. Lou felt around for knocking Jeff out with a stud, and he took off with him. When the gas was cleared, the Titans looked around. Jeff! Jeff! Terror called out. He's gone, Raven pointed out. Terror's eyes were brimming with tears. No! Jeff! When, when, when suddenly she looked angry. No, I had to save him. Then, then you made me these. Starfire told her. She pulled out a bag which had Tara's old black jumper, the yellow tee in the middle, her yellow shorts, and her brown belt, boots, and gloves. Five minutes later, Tara got dressed out of her gold outfit. Oh, I'm not sure to my boyfriend. Let's go. Jeff woke up in his Jeff woke up in a cave. His hands were tied behind his back and he struggled but couldn't break free. Dog barber, he heard in the slave's voice. My chains are are hard metal. You can't break free. Slave walked towards Jeff. What, what do you want with me? Jeff said out the ears. Slave chuckled. I want you to join me, Jeffrey. You can be my apprentice. You are a very skilled slave. You have the power. You have proved yourself useful to me. Jeff once again gritted his teeth. I'll never work for you. And besides, I'm not a killer anymore. Slade crouched down and faced Jeff. Come to the slave. He stood up. I'll give you a choice, Jeff. 
Either you work for me and become my apprentice, or I grow up tight with Tyler. Is that still stubborn? Well, I'm just grunting. Let Lou go, he cried out. Let him go, you monster. Slade struck Jeff across the face. Enough! He shouted. Oh, mm. well, you're going to pay for this, Slade. And with that, Slade left the room. So why isn't so why isn't Starfire coming? Kara asked. Well, someone had to babysit Sally, that Sally kid. Robin told her. Five Titans found an underground tunnel. It's probably where Slade is, Robin said. They climbed through the tunnel and walked through a big tube. I think I I think I hear Jeff. Kara whispered. As they entered the room where Jeff was being held. Hello, Titans. They heard a voice and turned to see Slade. Nicely, the two walk in. Slade clicked his fingers and out came Lou and slowed against Slade. Slade's robot minions. Axe He shouted. Well, that was it, folks. I hope you enjoyed my reading of chapters I did, man. seven and eight. We hope uh, to let me know uh, what you thought. And I hope to see you next time. I can't wait for next time, ma'am. So, guys, that was chapter seven and eight of Don't Stop Smiling, the and the own content, the fan fiction continuity of the Teen Titans series. And I, so far, this is really getting inter- really really interesting. I like, I love this, I love where this plot is going. Keep it up, man. I think you're very good. Now on to uh, now on to the next video where I have to. We are going to be reacting to a new video. From from my from one of my other friends and commander. What is it? You need you need to see. We got a bit more information, but you're not going to like it. What do you mean? What do you mean? It is regarding the ink machine, sir. You need to see this. I'm on my way. Excuse me, guys. I'll be right back in a minute. All right, guys. <clears throat> Can you at least wait for me to, to, to finish the episode? Cannot wait, Commander. Cambot, uh, to go to intermission, please.